The Minnesota Wild found their footing at the end of October. Can they carry that into the month of November? We take a look at the calendar for November's games and give our predictions on who will have the best month today on Locked on Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. And just as a reminder, Locked On Wild is free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts. On today's episode, Zach Zeman cho- uh, joins us to take a look at the month of November. We'll go game by game and see what the Wild's chances are against the teams they'll face here in November. And we'll take a guess as to who we think will be the Locked On Wild's player of the month. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider. And as mentioned, joined by one of the OGs, Zach Zeman. Zach, the Wilds got through the month of October, found their game. Injuries are a bit of a concern heading into November. All in all, it seems like the team has gotten back on track as we start November. Yeah, you know, it was a rough, rough first couple of games. Uh, you know, tough to see this team, you know, have high expectations moving in and drop a couple uh, quick ones. Uh, a lot of high scoring ones, which wasn't fun to see. You know, we were we were excited to see the new goalie tandem and Flurry and Gustafson put in the work. Uh, but it was tough to see those. But now, uh, you know, towards the end of the month, finally getting there game to bet uh, back together a couple days off road trip looked fine um you know i mean it's all you can ask for when you're gone for 10 days or so you know and then you come back home and you win one again Mon- against montreal like that it's i think it definitely says something about it the wild are back on their game and not to tip our hand as to potential guesses for player of the month but kirill kaprizov got the month started off on the right foot as the wild beats the canadians to start the month by a score of four to one uh, Seattle Kraken coming to town uh, tomorrow night. Well, actually tonight when people are listening to this. And uh, the Kraken are an interesting team because they've got some real elite young talent, but maybe not quite there yet. And uh, with the Wild dealing with some injuries, uh, should represent a good opportunity for them to, uh, to face a quality opponent, but ultimately a game that uh, I still firmly believe the Wild uh, have a good chance of winning. Yeah, I, I do too, and I think Seattle's one of those weird teams. I think the, I think betters like them a lot. You know, they're kind of not favorite, but they can find a way to win like that, um, especially against this this Minnesota Wild team that's injured. It's definitely a good game for Seattle. Um, but for the Wild, you know, you're, you've been away for a little bit, and you come back home. Uh, I think this is a must-win game. I, I said yesterday was a must-win game, uh, but th- this next one against Seattle is a must-win. I mean, you really got to show uh, this crowd what you're made of after you drop three in a row to start the year at home. Uh, you definitely got to bounce back in the X and the X Energy Center, and I think uh, this game against Seattle is one to do it. Um, you know, you never know with Hartman now on the IR and stuff like that. You know, you got a lot of injuries to work through, you, but you know, I think being back in Minnesota says a lot for these guys, and I think the energy will be there. Um, just as kind of a for everybody listening, it sounds like from what I saw. Uh, from comments from Dean Evison, is that the team is going to go with 11 forwards and seven defensemen for tonight's game against the Kraken. But that means we're going to get additional shifts for Kirill and Matt Boldy. And I feel like that is a win, especially with a long weekend. Yeah, for sure. I think it's, it's awesome to see Kirill back on his game. I mean, that game against Montreal was was seriously phenomenal. He almost had a hattie. I mean, he ringed it off the post. I mean, no, he's all over the ice. I think Matt Boldy is, is also just an amazing piece to this puzzle. Uh, you know, it's 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 awesome to see him thrive. I mean, he's literally my age. I'm in college. You know, I'm a junior in college. Like, I'm 21. But Matt Boldy is also the same age, and he's killing it in this league. And this league does not take any names. Like, I mean, if you if you find the skill and you find the comfort in playing in, in this big league ice, I mean, sure. Like, I think Matt Boldy's found his home, and it, it seriously is. Um, amazing to see him play. I'm, I'm happy both of those guys, um, you know, are, are are the young leaders of this new team. And I think uh, when you get those guys rolling, it's 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 tough to stop for sure. Danger zone. Yeah. Um, so 
the Wilds have this unique opportunity. They play tonight. They don't play Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. So a chance to rest, chance to get everybody some rest time before going out on the road for a little mini three-game road trip, and the Wild will face the Los Angeles Kings, Anaheim, and Seattle once again. And, Zach, we saw the Los Angeles Kings and Kevin Fiala early in the season. The Wilds goaltending situation, it seems like, has been has been stabilized over the last few games. Um, the Kings has not. Because <laughs> I looked at the numbers the other day, and I, I it made me ill that their team goals against average is almost four and a half. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's going to be tough for them. But I feel like if the Wilds get into one of those higher scoring games again against the Kings, I think they got a great chance to win. Yeah, well, you mentioned that long weekend, I think, is super crucial before you head out to L.A. and Anaheim. I think you can get a lot done in those four in those four days off um, leading into this road trip. I think, you you know, you got a lot of new guys coming up uh, who aren't used to this team, you know, that, in, filling in injuries and all that jazz. So there's a lot of a lot of stuff you get to figure out before you go. Um, and it's interesting because that, that game against the Kings on Tuesday and then Wednesday is against Anaheim. So you got a back-to-back there. I think you got to tell Gustafson to start one of those two. Um, whether it be, uh, I don't know. I, I think he could start against Anaheim. I, I like Flurry against the Kings. You know, they had that super high scoring game earlier um, uh, against LA at home and lost. Um, and I think the Wild can get them back. I, I mean, you know, last year's team, these these are three winnable games, but this year's team, it's kind of like, well, you got, especially with the scenario the Wild are in, you know, um, I'm, I'm expecting one of those games to get dropped. I, I, unfortunately, I don't. I, I mean, I mean, you, you. <laughs> I hate to be like the Debbie Downer here, but it's going to be tough to pull out wins like that. I mean, you got a lot, a lot of new, a lot of new guys, a lot of weekend time of practicing before you get back on the ice. And I think, you know, the Wild could get caught off guard. They're traveling to a different time zone. You know, something, something might happen. But um, probably Flurry in LA and and Gustafson in Anaheim. I think you got a good deal. Um, it, it's a weird little thing because the Wilds they got that three game road trip. Then on the 13th, they host the San Jose Sharks. So they face three teams, four teams in the Pacific in a row. Uh, The Los Angeles Kings are the best of the bunch. Anaheim is one of the worst teams in the Pacific Division. And the San Jose Sharks are basically actively tanking uh, (laughs) to try to get Connor Bedard. So an opportunity for the Wild to, we were talking about it before recording and, and earlier this week, this is an opportunity for this wild team to, even with the injuries, go on a little bit of a run here. Absolutely. There's there's potential to get on a run. And I think the way the Wild have been playing last couple of games, you know, you got Chicago, Montreal, right after that Detroit loss. Um, you got two good wins there. Um, I think I think you can definitely make a name for yourself, bounce back up in those standings. I know it's been kind of rough. The Central Division's super weird right now. You got the Blues in dead last. Who would have thought? Um, not me, honestly. I think the Blues would have been up there. They look sound, but... Not, not right now. So it's, you know, it's, it's the weird part of the season where, you know, you, you're super jumbly. A lot of stuff's happening. Obviously, I shouldn't even be talking about standings right now. But it does mean a lot when the Blues are losing. They're supposed to be a pencil in for the playoffs. So, I mean, if you can if you can generate wins while other teams are struggling this early, I think it's a big deal. And then, um, especially right now, I, I think you it's, it's actually weird because you go to Los Angeles and Anaheim and Seattle, and then you come back and host San Jose. Well, San Jose is literally – a couple feet away. Why don't, why don't we just go visit them there? And then you go over to Nashville, which is super weird. Um, kind of a weird little part of the schedule, but definitely some winnable games for sure. Um, and we'll we'll talk about the Nashville game a little bit more in depth as we uh, finish off the month in our next segment. But uh, the Wild, yeah, host San Jose, go to Nashville, and then they're back for uh, seven consecutive home games going into no, uh, December. But um, as we're going to talk about in a little bit, Nashville is a little bit of a mess right now. Uh, They are off to a rough start, and so we will uh, discuss that. We'll continue our look at November as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline.net. They are your number one source for betting on the NFL, college football, the new NBA season, as well as the NHL, the World Series, you name it. They've got it. You can find all the latest player developments, team matchups for every big game, plus news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game in every sport. And as always, betonline.net remains your continued source 
for all of your sports wagering information with live betting and up to the minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events, including Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing, golf, the NFL, college football, college basketball starting soon, as well as so many more. So head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action at betonline.net, where the game starts. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild, once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen every day. Make sure your second listen is the Locked on Sports Today podcast. From the games that matter to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked on can provide. Locked on Sports Today is available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, continuing our look at the month of November for the Minnesota Wild. Seth Topol hanging out with Zach Zeman and Zach at Nashville to start off the second half of the month. Predators have had a rough go of it, but as we learned last year, with the style that Nashville plays, especially with the Wild a little shorthanded here at this point in the, in the season, they're going to try to be physical. That could be a problem even with them lower in the standings here at this point in the year. Yeah, absolutely. If I'm looking at the month of uh, November here, that's definitely a game that's circled on my calendar. You know, it's it's a weird one away game, and and then you head back to home to ho- to be, to host that big home stand. Um, you know, you, when you travel to Nashville for you know three days and or whatever, you, you got to get out. I don't know. It's just it's just a little weird part in uh, November where the Wild have a lot to to finally prove. And I think against a Central Division team like Nashville, who's who's looking to get back on the track, just kind of like the Wild are. I wouldn't say the Wild are there yet. You know, we're, we're both still trying to find our ground. Um, I think it's I think it's going to be a big game. And, and and Nashville is not a friendly environment really ever. They got a rowdy fan base down there. You know, it's going to be a loud game. I think I think Nashville comes out physical. Um, you know, afraid of Roman Yossi. He's, he's absolutely a wild killer. Um, and, and I remember leading up to the playoffs last year, the Wild had a game in Nashville that I just cannot get out of my head. Um, and, and Nashville was still in it and really didn't need to be at all. And, and, and the Wild were still having trouble finding a way to pull out of Nashville with the win. So I think it's definitely going to be a good game. Um, just a weird little spot in the month where you, you would go away for a game and come back for seven straight. So They should have flipped them, but yeah. I'm not the one that makes the schedule. So we'll, uh, we'll deal with it. Then that homestand you mentioned. How about this for a start to the homestand and a closeout of the month? Pittsburgh. Carolina, Winnipeg, Toronto, and Arizona. You talk about, let's just start with the Toronto Maple Leafs, who have been one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference over the last few years. Not playing like it right now, and uh, turns out their goalie situation is a little bit of a mess. Yeah, the, the NHL right now is the weirdest it's been in a while. No team has legit said, I'm here to own this division. Um, you know, everyone's still kind of dropping weird games that you wouldn't think would be dropped but you know it is what it is I think the wild can really make a name for themselves in this homestand I mean you once you're at home and you you're st- you're sitting there forever with all those games you gotta make improvements and you have a lot of time to do so um there's you know after that Carolina game on Saturday what is it the 19th you got three straight off days and then you host Winnipeg and Toronto and I think uh, you know it's it's all about how to utilize that time you know, it's it's kind of weird when the, the after the Wild host Seattle tonight, uh, they have like four straight, but then they fly. But but when after that Carolina game at home, they stay home, and I think that's actually a big deal when you don't have to prepare for an away, you don't have to pack, you don't have to think about other things. All you have to think about is going to the rink and playing hockey, um, and that, and that's a big deal on this homestand. It, it, you know, it's it kind of sounds cliche and all, but it, it actually matters when you when you don't have to do anything but go play hockey. I think I think it's going to be a big a big homestand for this team. You know. Um, you know, Pittsburgh trying to make a name for themselves. I think they'll be good this year. Uh, that's definitely a big game. Nashville and Pittsburgh almost back to back there. That's that's a big one. Um, and then Carolina is always good. I think Carolina, I'm a big believer in slumps. Um, and a lot of teams just drop a couple, but they're always going to remain at the top at the end of the year. And these are the teams that are going to do so. Um, you know, Winnipeg's got to have a breakout year this year. I mean, if they want to do anything, they got to win these games. And so everyone's everyone's here to play, obviously. And, you know, except for maybe Arizona, but, <laughs> uh, you know, 
it, it'll be interesting. This this month is a big month for the Wild. It's a big defining month. Um, you know, I think this is at the end of this month. This is where you're going to be. Well, if 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 something's not working, then you got to make some changes. But you know, if if you're staying consistent and you're winning more than you're losing, I think it'll be fine. Um, side note. When the Wild go to Arizona, I legitimately might have to get tickets to go because from the sounds of it, yes. they have put together an environment that makes it an unbelievable experience. Uh, the Locked On Coyotes hosts had a chance to go. They raved about it. And from what I've seen so far, I mean, Pete Blackburn went for the opening night game, said it was unbelievable. Arizona, yeah. for being in such a small stadium, they might have put something together here. Yeah, no, I I always say one of the biggest mistakes I've made in my life is going to a college without a D1 hockey program. And I think that down there in ASU, when, when you give students the ability to get to those games for cheap and you get the band in there, I'm super biased because I'm a college kid right now, but that atmosphere has got to be fun. I mean, I, you know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate the scenario they're in with the arena they're in and yeah, it's it's super laughable and everything, but I think they're doing a great job with with trying to get that atmosphere up to its maximum potential, um, and and not just like the same old crowd going to those games and, and leaving seats empty. I think the partnership with ASU is something big. ASU is a big party school. They got a good journalism school down there, um, so I think a lot of guys are going to start to pay attention to the Arizona Coyotes, and I think they got something brewing. I like that down there. I think I, I would love to go. I, I honestly, it's 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 kind of a weird phase in, in NHL history where you get these weird, like the weird, I don't even know how many people they can sit in that arena, but that's definitely one significant piece of NHL history for sure. Yeah. I, I would love to go to a game there. Maybe when Austin Matthews signs there uh, after his current deal with Toronto's oh, done, maybe they'll go down there. Um, <laughs> All in all, we got 12 games on the schedule and all of them are winnable, but the big question is, how do we think they will do? So we're going to finish today's episode by just throwing out predictions for how we think the month of November will go. And uh, we'll do that as we finish up today's episode of Lockdown Wild after this. Final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wilds. Once again, thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Seth Topol and Zach Zeman hanging out and uh, looking at the month of November Trying to get a sense for what we think the Wild will do. Already 1-0 on the month after a quality win against Montreal. Okay, we've got 12 games as mentioned. 11 more to play, but one win already in the books. So uh, of those 12 games, if I had to hold you to a record prediction, Zach, what do you think? I, you know, I was kind of just skimming off the top of my head. At worst... I'll say this at worst, I think the wild drops six and that's, that's worse. Like, I'm not saying that's what I think is going to happen, but that's like, if the injuries are really hurting and there's not a lot going on goaltending wise, I think there's a, there's a potential to drop six, but I think, you know, I had them like in, in that prediction, I had them losing to Los Angeles in LA, losing to Seattle in Seattle after beating Seattle tonight, you know, so it's, you're going to drop one of those games. I think so. Um, it's just, Losing to Carolina, losing to Toronto, you know, I, just like the 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 teams that have the name are going to have the name for a reason. Right. I think the Wild have the opportunity to host them and beat them. Uh, like I said, we just talked about how long of, of and uh, good that homestand is for this team. I would say in a good prediction, they can win eight. Please don't kill me, Twitter, but I think they can pull out eight. I, well, I, I think so. Like that's that's a, that's a good set in stone. I'm, the Wild are not the best team in the NHL. They're not. So it's like, I think, and but they're not the worst. So and, and and if there's anything about the month of November this year is that it's a proving month, and and, and that you if you win these games, your team's going to be destined. Like that, that. This is a big month. I, I'm. Yeah. And we're not like sugarcoating that. Like this is a huge deal. It's earlier earlier month in the season. I think you have a lot of potential if you pull out this month with over 500. You know what I mean? Well, for sure. And if against some of these teams where you would at full strength kind of look at it and say, this is a game that the Wild should win. Yeah. If Marc-Andre Fleury can kind of take those games and say, okay, I know we're missing some pieces here, but I'm going to do my part to make sure that this doesn't end up being one of those fluky, weird losses. 
eight and four or, you know, even a couple of, say, overtime losses in there. So maybe you go like eight, two and two or eight, three and one. I would take a hundred times oh. out of a hundred because you then would be looking at a record of like 12, seven and two or even 12, eight and one or something like that through two months. And I think considering where everybody else is at right now, I think you feel pretty good about that. So Absolutely. I would uh, I would take it. I, however, am going to up it. <laughs> and let's just look at this because I am predicting. And this is not me. This is not me sipping the, the Kool-Aid. I just I feel like with the mix of where these games will be played, I'm predicting 10 and two because they beat Montreal already. I think they'll beat Seattle tonight. I just neither of those Kings goalies scares me at all. Um, yeah. Their, their offense is there, though. I think they got the firepower. And and we were just talking about this. It's goaltending matters. I think Fleury, yeah. Fleury exemplified that against Montreal, where the Wild were getting outshot in the first period, and Fleury kept them in with a 0-0 heading into the second. And then it blew out of the water from there. So you got to have good goaltending out of these Minnesota Wild goaltenders for sure. Yeah, and I, I just think if you give me Jonathan Quick or Cal Peterson or yes. Marc-Andre Fleury, Fleury is the one that I trust the most of oh, those absolutely. three. Absolutely. Anaheim's a mess. They had uh, their own player fire one into the net the <laughs> other night, and that just that just that, sums up the Anaheim Ducks. Oh man, I love Trevor Zegras, yeah. but that team is they are hurting right now, Shame and so me. that's when you should have honestly of these first few games before the Nashville game, uh, the Wild really they should win every one of those. Absolutely, games. I agree with that. And so, you know, you start with that and you say 6-0 and right there. The Nashville game, I mean, Nashville's 3-6-1 and right now, and UC Saros has a goals against average that is slightly less than Marc-Andre Fleury. So that tells you how they're doing right now. So I am uh, I'm picking the Wild to win that one. The two that I think they will drop. That's a huge game. That Nashville game, we, I, like, I, I honestly can't get rid of that. That's a huge game. Like, that might be, as yeah. we'll talk about, that might be game of the month. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm I'm picking the Wilds in that one. I think the Carolina game, because I, I think the Wild would be able to really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them if they were at full strength. And so if they're not in that game, it's going to be tricky. And I would say maybe an overtime loss to Toronto at home. But beyond that, I think they will... I think they'll contend in all the rest of those games. The Pittsburgh one, I would foresee being like an overtime win or maybe a shootout win because they're they're so so right now, but they have started to pick it up. Yeah, and so if that continues and they play the way that Pittsburgh typically does, that should be a, a challenge. But it's just I think sitting here and uh, credit to a lot of the a lot of the listeners who have said let's. Let's hold off and, and wait and see what happens after 10 games. We're 10 games in, and we, I think, can take that three games at the beginning of the year and just kind of chuck it. Yeah. Because what we've seen over the last seven has been very consistent, and that's that's what I'm confident rolling with right now. And So I'm saying 10 and 2, but... Uh, that would be sweet. Ultimately, between either of those, I think would be a huge month of November for this team. Um, we kind of, we kind of teed it up, but let's just game of the month. Which which do you think is going to be the game of the month of November? Okay, I have I have two. All right, so we've been talking about how serious that Nashville game is going to be. You know, you're going to Nashville out of in a weird limbo between your long home stand after hosting Nashville for one game. It's going to be weird. But you're going to go to Nashville. That's a huge game. That's a Central Division team away. That's a that's a big deal. But after you host Pittsburgh and Carolina following that Nashville game, you have three off days. And then you come back against a division rival in the Winnipeg Jets. And I think that the Winnipeg Jets always give the wild trouble at home. And I think if you can win that game against Winnipeg after having three days off, I mean, that's, that's a recipe for success. And I think those two, Nashville and Winnipeg, in two consecutive – or the, each following each other in the week, it's a big deal. I think that those are, those are the two I'm circling. Yeah, those are those are fantastic choices. And Winnipeg, especially with the sound from the sounds of it, Connor Hellebuck 
being more like the Hellebuck of two years ago and not the Hellebuck of last year. That was just not great. Yeah. Um, those are going to be key. And those are the first real division tests that this team's going to have. Chicago, you know, hats off to them. They're playing well to start the season, but I, I don't think, I think that course will write itself uh, as the season goes on. And they'll be more towards picking for Connor Bedard than they will be for a playoff spot. So give me the Winnipegs, give me the Nashvilles. Those are the real, you know, all the way up to Colorado, St. Louis. Dallas. Those are all the division matchups we care about. Mm -hmm. So that'll be a nice real test for this team to, uh, to see how they stack up. I'm going to circle the Carolina game because I think there's a lot of steam that that is one of the teams to beat in the Eastern conference. And so seeing how you stack up against them is always kind of a barometer of success. And so being able to play against those guys, a team that the wild beat, last year in a real tight game um, is going to be fun. And so I'm, I'm excited for that one, but those are all three just elite choices. Yeah. You just got to keep, keep an eye on the, the injuries, you know, it's, yes, it's, that's always going to be a narrative this month is, is who's going to be back. Is Hartman really going to be on the IR for a long time? You know, if he comes back, I think the wild have a really good chance at Carolina. They're a tough physical team, quick team for sure. And they can pose a threat. Let's finish by going with who we think the locked on wild player of the month for November will be. And then we can, uh, we can see how we did when we uh, check back in December. Uh, Zach, who do you think is going to uh, have the greatest month of November for the wild? Well, based off that Montreal game, I mean, it's so hard to go against Kirill the thrill. I mean, the kids hit is just insane to watch. Uh, you know, it's a huge huge piece to this wild team they'd be nothing without him like i mean it's 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 insane what he's doing um but i'm gonna say if with all these injuries i think johnny goudreau is gonna make a name for himself and i think he can really really start to make some rumblings um it depends who he's paired with you know it's like i said it all just it all is is jumbled right now but if, if there's anyone i'm like gonna lean back on i think johnny goudreau is always a good insurance pick I don't know if this is a hot take. I just, I think he's going to build off of his third star of the week for the NHL performance. I am picking Marc-Andre Fleury to be the player of the month. <laughs> Honestly, I think, and I mean, he's had now, I think five or six really solid starts in a row. It just, it looks like he looks like somebody that really is just in full control uh, between the pipes. And I think he's going to go on a nice little run here. Yeah. Those first couple of games, you know, it's, it's always like they, the other teams get a shot and you're like, you know, you're always ducking. You're always like wincing at the TV, like praying that they're, that the rebound is not as big as you think it's going to be. Um, but if it looks flurry looks great. I mean, you, you, He's the all star. He's he's Mark Andre Fleury Cup guy. Like that's like the guy. And 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 when he's playing well, I think the Wild can really rally off of him. Um, and and I mean, if if he's going to be the number one star, I do not see the Wild losing a lot of these games. And I don't see the Wild sitting him on the bench at a lot. You know. No. Yeah. Right. You, you just can't. You just can't. You have to ride it out. And and I think you know. Fleury's got a lot to prove. I don't really like that narrative, but you know, it's it's all about just finding your game. Um, and, and if Flurry can really lock down or locked on uh, in this month of November, um, then then you the Wild are going to find success, no doubt about it. I knew he had gotten his confidence back when he did the pad shake after the <laughs> uh, Patrick Kane shootout goal uh, save. Yeah, I was like, oh, he's back yeah. against his former team. How do you think that felt? Remember, the Wild went there last year and absolutely exposed Mark Andre Flurry and the Chicago Blackhawks and. That was, I think that was one of the first times I've seen Flurry smash his stick against the post at the end of the game. Yeah, you know, and just it's just like the Blackhawks were in shambles, and and the Wild come back there this year, and Flurry stops them all on the shootout and doesn't let a single goal go in. I mean, that's got to just be like, let's go! Like you're hopping on that plane back home, like let's go! Like I, you know, if if you're Mark Andre Flurry, you needed that game more than anything against mm -hmm. your former team in Chicago. 
uh, you know, and, and I think Flurry's got it. I, I honestly, I, I will ride with that train. I will ride with that train. That's, that's definitely not, I, I don't think it's a hot take. He's, he's, he's on a horse for a reason right now. He's looking great. He's looking sharp against Montreal. Like I said, holding them to zero goals in the first period is a huge deal. Um, the Wild could have easily fell back, fell behind, and we all know how hard it is to get to get leads back, especially after the first three games and how those went. You know, you just I don't think the Wild led at all. If, you know that stat? They just like couldn't lead. Yeah, it, it, you know it was a mess. That the yeah. bottom line is a mess. And now now that Flurry's back and playing well, the Wild are going to win. So the Wild are winning. There you have it the month of November preview. And so we'll, uh, we'll check back and we'll see how we did as the wilds embark upon uh, the rest of the month. So thank you for tuning into today's episode of locked on wild. Now that you're finished again, make sure you check out the locked on sports today podcast, the biggest news, the biggest games, the biggest takes all by our locked on insiders. So make sure you check out locked on sports today, wherever you listen to your podcasts, Make sure you subscribe on YouTube to Locked on Wild. Follow us on your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any of the flurry of content that we have coming up for you here throughout the rest of the season. We're keeping you up to date with new episodes every Monday through Friday and then some as part of the Locked on Sports Podcast Network.